be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. How many of you can even fathom or begin to understand what it must have been like in Jesus' day to be a day laborer? If you get up early in the morning, right? Early in the morning means what? It said in our text that, that, Jesus, that the landowner went out early in the morning. What time is that? I heard it. 6 a.m. Basically, the landowner goes out at 6 o'clock in the morning to find if there's people standing in the marketplace. And there was always people standing in the marketplace. And the landowner said, go and work in my vineyard. They will actually, first before it says that they worked out the what? The usual daily wage. And what's the usual daily wage? One denarius. One denarius is the usual daily wage, right? So he worked that out with them, and he said, go into my, to my vineyard. But can you imagine having to get up every morning and go and stand in the city square and hope someone's going to show up and say, I want you to go work for me, and I'm going to pay you what you need to live today. You go and you break your back in the hot sun all day long, and you, go, you get your pay, and you go, and you pay for what you need to, and you maybe spend a couple hours with your family, and you go to bed, and you get up the next day and do the exact same thing again. You go and you stand in the city square, and you hope someone's going to show up and say, I want you to go and work for me. Can you imagine the stress of not knowing if you can provide for yourself or for your family? So we have this story here of Jesus telling the disciples that the kingdom of God is like a landowner who goes out into the market square early in the morning and he negotiates with some people on the normal daily wage and he sends them off into his vineyard to work for him. And he goes back at 9 o'clock, three hours later, right? And he sees people still standing there and he says, you go and work. Now these people were probably there at 6 o'clock in the morning. And nobody hired them. So they've been standing there now for three hours, wondering if they'd be able to feed their family today. And then he goes out again at noon and at three, and he does the same thing. Now these people have been staying there for what? Six hours or nine hours, stressing in the heat of the day, not making any money, wondering how they're going to be able to feed their family tonight when they go home. And then again at 5 o'clock, right? So how long is this work day? It's not eight hours. <laughs> it's not even four tens. <laughs> it's 12 hours long. He went out at 5 o'clock, the landowner, and found people still standing there. And he asked them, why have you been standing here idle all day? And what did they say? Nobody's hired us. So were they standing behind other people hoping that they didn't get hired? What did I just say about everybody up to this point? When you go out there in the morning, you hope someone's going to come and hire you because you want to be able to do what? Provide for your family. So you don't stand there for 11 hours and hide behind people and wonder if somebody's going to come and hire me the last hour. Because if they come and hire me the last hour, what am I going to get? I'm not going to get a denarius. I'm going to get less than that. And I actually did some research because I wondered, you know, the denarius is a single day's wage. And I wondered, is it possible to give someone less than a denarius? And it is. There's actually three coins smaller than a denarius. So it's possible for the landowner to give you, to pay you for just an hour worth of work. One twelfth of a day. So it's possible. If this person could go and work for an hour and get something. And they may think as you get hired at that last hour to say, well, this landowner is not possibly going to pay me for a full day's wage for only working for him for an hour. Right? And you've got to think, how far away is the landowner's vineyard from the, from the town square anyhow? So if he hires them at 5, they're not going to be there until 5.15, depending on how far they have to walk. So they really only worked 45 minutes. So now the landowner is really only going to give me like a fifteenth of what I should get to help cover my family for the day. But we get the story then, and Jesus says that when the day ended, the, the landowner went to the manager and said, Call the last hired and pay them first. 
This is not the way you would do it, but why did Jesus do this? Why did Jesus say that the landowner paid the last first? So he could say the pithy statement at the end of the story, the last will be first and the first will be last. That's not it. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good thing that he says that, and he actually said that at the end of chapter 19, when he's giving a parable about eternal life. The last will be first and the first shall be last. But he calls the last, land, the last workers that come into the vineyard to, to, so that those who are hired first would see what the last got paid. So they would assume that they would get more. Right? Isn't that the way that it's supposed to work? If I go and work for somebody for 12 hours and break my back in the, in the heat of the sun, I expect to get paid more than the person that showed up and worked the last hour. Right? If that last person shows up and they get paid a denarius, then I should get... How much should I get? 12, right? To be fair, I would get 12 denarius. Denarii, actually, is the word there, not denarius. Right? Denarii. I'd get 12 denarii. Then that's fair, right? Well, one of the podcasts I listened to, one of the, one of the, the biblical scholars on there said that he, uh, he remembers he had a policeman friend wherever he lived, and he said that his policeman friend, when he arrested somebody, they would say, well, this isn't fair. And the policeman would say, the fair is something that happens in August where they judge pigs. <laughs> right? Is life fair? Absolutely not. But sometimes we get hit with things that we don't expect. And we have to walk through valleys that we don't want to walk through. And we have to do things that we wish we didn't have to. Life's not fair. And neither is God. Thankfully. This story comes where the landowner pays the twelfth, those who work the hour, a denarius. And the rest come. And get the same exact thing. And those who came at the end grumbled with the landowner. And he said, what are you, what are you, I have done no wrong to you in paying you one denarius. Because that's what we agreed on. Remember? We had this discussion. It actually says it in the reading. We had a discussion about how much you were going to get paid. And you said you would work for the daily wage. So why are you grumbling? I'm giving you what I said I would. And am I not able to be generous with what I have? And then he says this, this phrase, because are you jealous, right? The landowner says to the workers, or are you envious or jealous because I am generous? Are you envious because I am generous? Um, this is actually a really interesting phrase in the Greek. Because it's, it's translated as, are you jealous? And how many of you have ever heard of, a, of a, this English term called a metaphor, right? Where we say things that mean something different, right? Like he had a hard heart, right? It doesn't actually mean that his heart was hard because he wouldn't be able to live if his heart was actually hard, right? But this statement here is, are you jealous because I am generous is, in the Greek, is your eye evil? Think about that for a minute. When you look at somebody else who has something that you think that they shouldn't have, why do you think that? Right? The twelfth person that came in the vineyard shouldn't have gotten the daily wage because they didn't deserve that. I worked for 12 hours. I deserved it. So I should get that. But they shouldn't. It doesn't matter whether you're generous or not, landowner. I, I got what I deserved and they're getting something better. How many of us have thought that way? Don't raise your hands. It's okay. It's church. <laughs> I don't want anybody to lie. <laughs> right? We've all thought that way. We've all looked on somebody else and said, that's not fair. They don't deserve that. But I am thankful that our God is like this landowner and gives to those who don't deserve it. Because you know what? None of us deserve what God has given to us. None of us deserve the grace that God has given to us. Because every last one of us are sinners. And every last one of us have done things that we shouldn't have. And that probably includes today, within the last 20 minutes, some of us. 
This morning before we ate breakfast, probably after we go home, we're going to mess up. And if we don't believe in a generous God that gives beyond what we deserve, then none of us deserve any of His grace at all. And that's why I'm thankful for this story this morning. And my eye is definitely evil, because I do that. I look at other people and judge them. But that's my issue that I need to work through. That I need to give up and say, God, you just handle it. Because you know what? When we get to those things that aren't fair in life, when we get to those dark valleys that we have to walk through, that's when we can positively guarantee that God is always walking with us. He's holding on to our hands. And he's leading us through the spaces that we don't want to go through. So trust and know that God loves you beyond all imagination. And he asks you to go and to love beyond all imagination because it's not our place to judge who deserves to be in. That's for God. Ours is to love and to share that mercy and grace that God has given to us. So go and call people to come. And know even though we are probably the ones that started out at 6 o'clock in the morning, that those who come at the 11th hour are still going to get what we get. And that's okay. Because we didn't deserve it to begin with either. And our God is a gracious God who loves everyone. So go and tell that to the world so that all can come and know his love.